Hi all, in this video we are going to see about plasma proteins. So plasma proteins can be asked as a short essay like what are the functions of plasma proteins or it can even be asked as an essay question. So we will just see how an essay question can be asked based on plasma proteins. So this is a question that was asked previously. A 54 year old man admitted in a medicine ward with a history of chronic alcoholism presented with bilateral swelling of both feet and distension of abdomen also yellowish discoloration of skin and eye the bilirubin level is 9.3 mg per deciliter globulin is 2.3 and plasma albumin is 1.6 name the clinical condition what is the pathophysiology and discuss the functions of plasma proteins so now this question if it was asked at a in a medicine exam the the whole questions the answers would be would have been different but since it is asked in a first year MBBS uh, examination, we will analyze this question at that level. Okay. So first of all, I would like to give a brief introduction on what plasma proteins is. So we know that our plasma basically consists of cells around 45 percentage of our blood contains cells and the rest 55 percentage is a plasma and inside the plasma we've got 92 percentage water and the rest 7 percentages proteins and then we've got a small percentage of other substances okay now what are these proteins that are present inside the blood so the protein the 7 percent of the protein basically consists of albumin around 54 percentage of the protein is albumin and the other 38 percentage is globulin and the rest will uh, occupy almost 7 percentage so the major proteins major fraction of proteins that is present in the plasma or in the blood is albumin its normal values around 3.5 to 5 gram per deciliter and then we've got globulin 1.5 to 3 gram per deciliter and we've got fibrinogen 0.3 gram per deciliter so there is something called albumin globulin ratio so normally the level of albumin should be more than that of globulin so albumin globulin ratio is around 1.7 is to 1 so the range should be somewhere around 1.2 to 2.2 okay so that is albumin globin ratio now why are we talking about albumin globin ratio in some diseases the production of albumin might be affected in that case you will have a reversal of this albumin globin ratio okay which means globin will be more than albumin so that indicates a pathology okay so now let's uh, go back to our uh, question so name the clinical condition so we'll just see what we've got here what about what the symptoms of the patient he had swelling on both feet he had distension of abdomen and also he had yellowish discoloration okay and his see his globulin and albumin here globulin is more than albumin which means albumin production is affected so from where do you think albumin is produced see albumin is synthesized from the liver so these symptoms along with the fact that albumin is produced from the liver points to a condition which is affecting the liver and on top of that is got this jaundice also so th all this points to a chronic liver disease most probably cirrhosis okay and then they've asked about the pathophysiology so here our concentration will not concentrate on the pathology of the chronic liver disease we're going to focus on why there is a bilateral swelling of both feet what is the pathophysiology behind that behind the bilateral swelling of both feet distension of abdomen and why is there an albumin globulin reversal okay so we'll see what is the pathophysiology behind this or pathophysiology behind this edema so in order to know how edema is caused we should first know about starling's forces so what are starling's forces see starling's forces are the forces that act on the blood vessel wall which determines the direction of the fluid movement so what are these pressures that act or forces that act on the blood vessel wall so first of all we've got the capillary hydrostatic pressure which is exerted by the fluid inside the capillary and this will cause the fluid to move out of the blood vessel okay so this capillary hydrostatic pressure will want the fluid to move out of the blood vessel then we've got a capillary plasma colloid oncotic pressure which wants the fluid to move into the blood vessel okay so remember the colloid osmotic pressure the colloid is like a sponge it wants the fluid to move into the blood vessel okay similarly on the interstitium also we've got some pressures 
so the pressure that is acting on the interstitium inside the interstitium we've got the interstitial fluid pressure which causes the fluid to move out of the interstitium that means into the blood vessel okay hydrostatic pressure always pushes the fluid so the interstitial fluid pressure wants the fluid to move out of the interstitium into the blood vessel and we've got the interstitial fluid colloid on cortic pressure which causes the fluid to move into the interstitium that means it is going to draw blood from uh, draw the fluid from the blood vessel okay so we have to remember that the colloid osmotic pressure is mostly uh, determined by the amount of albumin present so suppose there is hypoalbuminemia what will happen so that means suppose there is decreased amount of plasma proteins inside the blood then what will happen is this plasma colloid on oncotic pressure plasma colloid osmotic or oncotic pressure that is going to decrease which means the force that is going to pull the fluid into the blood is going to decrease which means there will be more fluid moving out of the blood vessel into the interstitium which in turn will cause edema okay so the pathophysiology behind the edema is in renal diseases and liver diseases there is going to be hypoproteinemia this hypoproteinemia will cause decreased capillary oncotic pressure which in turn will cause edema clear so that is the pathophysiology of edema going back to the question now we've got to discuss the functions of plasma proteins so what are the different functions of plasma proteins so the first and the most important function is the maintenance of osmotic pressure what is meant by this osmotic pressure maintenance see normally we should have the albumin will exert a normal oncotic pressure of around 25 to 30 mm of mercury so that can be explained with the help of this diagram so see here we've got the capillary hydrostatic pressure is around 17 mm of mercury and the plasma oncotic pressure is around 25 mm of mercury then the interstitial pressures the plas the interstitial oncotic pressures nearly negligible so we consider it as zero and the interstitial hydrostatic pressures around 1 mm of mercury so it was it is because of these pressures that there is no edema the net movement of fluid will always be into the blood vessel at the especially the venous end so there won't be any fluid extra in the interstitium okay so this this is basically because we've got plasma proteins inside the blood vessel exerting that normal oncotic pressure or osmotic pressure thus it prevents edema by pulling the water from the interstitium into the blood and albumin contributes around 80 percentage due to its low molecular weight and high concentration so that is how plasma proteins have got an important role to play in maintenance of the normal osmotic pressure and preventing edema so the second important function of plasma proteins is immunity so we know that in humoral immunity we've got immunoglobulins that means they are basically globulins or they are basically proteins so they destroy the microorganisms by reacting with their antigen so in humoral immunity we've studied how the b cells get converted to plasma cells which in turn release a lot of immunoglobulins like ige igm igg a and d all these are immunoglobulins and they are basically proteins so thus plasma proteins have got a very important role to play in immunity next important function is in coagulation fibrinolysis so which plasma protein is involved in coagulation it is a fibrinogen so fibrinogen is the protein which is converted to fibrin which forms that net like structure and prevents bleeding so the fibrinolytic factors like fibrinolysin dissolves the clot so both in coagulation and fibrinolysis we need proteins plasma proteins and thus that is a important function of the plasma proteins so i hope you remember this picture which shows how a temporary plated plug is formed that is also a role that is fibrinogen has also got a role in that in, in formation of this temporary plated plug because the interlinking of the platelets is via the fibrinogen okay so that is a role in coagulation and fibrinolysis next is got a role in transport so in transport especially proteins like albumin alpha globulin and all they they transport specific things in the blood okay it can be enzymes carbon dioxide vitamins and drugs all are transported by these plasma proteins and then we've got some specific transport protein also 
for example we've got the trans cobalamin which is a specific transport of a vitamin b12 for copper we've got ceruloplasmin and then for hemoglobin we've got haptoglobin and for iron we've got transferrin so these are the different specific plasma proteins that are involved in transport so transport is another function of plasma proteins next important role is that plasma proteins contribute to the viscosity of blood so the viscosity of blood is mainly maintained by the fibrinogen and globulin which provides a resistance to blood flow and this in turn is very important for maintaining the blood pressure so that is that is another important role of plasma proteins next is the acid base balance so plasma proteins can act like a buffer what do you mean by buffer buffer is any substance which act which combine with uh, a, a free acid or a free base in order to maintain the ph at a normal level so plasma proteins can act as a buffer it has 15 percentage of the blood buffering capacity not only that why does uh, plasma proteins act like a buffer because they are amphoteric in nature so it can act as acids or base and thereby maintain the blood ph at 7.5 so suppose there is extra acid in the blood which means there are extra h plus ions in the blood what will happen the buffer which is the plasma protein will combine with this extra amount of uh, h plus that is present and will create weak acids so that the plasma the ph will not change much okay so that is how plasma proteins contribute to acid base balance and so finally another important function is role formation what do you mean by role formation it is the stacking of rbcs when the blood is kept outside the body so there are plasma proteins that promote role formation like the fibrinogen and globulin and there are plasma proteins that inhibit role formation like albumin so basically it the erythrocyte sedimentation rate thus depends on the amount of plasma protein present and what type of plasma protein is present in excess inside the blood or whether anything is deficient so we know that why, why is it uh, why how how is plasma protein level going to affect role formation see around each rbc we've got a slight negative potential which is called the zeta potential so normally because of this negative charge the rbcs get repelled but when there is excess fibrinogen fibrinogen what will happen it will negate this negative charge so that the rbcs will stack on each other forming the role so that is how the plasma protein level can affect the role formation so that completes all the seven important functions of plasma proteins so thus we have discussed this essay question so you know what stalin's forces are what is the cause for edema and what are the functions of plasma proteins so i hope this video was useful for you thank you